Hello and welcome to Jason Duland dot com and my extra squeaky chair. You know, sometimes I'll sit in it and it doesn't seem to don't seem to do much. It never really does much, but it doesn't make a particularly interesting sound, unlike what's coming out of the bedroom from Andre and what he's doing with one of my old slippers. But that's, uh, I'll leave that to your imagination. And then there's other times when I'll just any single movement, any any specific you know, anything. Just the movement of my jaw whilst talking seems to stimulate the squeakiness of the chair. For whatever reason. So I still have to figure out a setup for this. A nice by set up I mean when I do the deep sleep whisper hypnosis sessions I've now got a routine for that took a while but I know I've got a routine I do it at the same time each day Um. I record them in my bedroom. Andre is in his cage. So there's no distractions other than maybe, you know, background sounds. Although that's not really a distraction. But when I do these, let me bore you to sleep. For some reason, Andre comes alive. Which is a bit annoying. Not that he's alive, but just that he decides to be very animated. Luckily, he's in the other room, and he he might be in there for a while. He's a he's a very considerate lover. He'll be he'll be he'll be some while. <laughs> oh dear. Um. So please, only. Listen to this when you can uh, safely close your eyes. And if you're watching a video on YouTube, this video rather, not any video or any of my videos, that is, but you but only watch if you can safely close your eyes as this um, purposely recorded boring session may cause boredom and I don't know about you but when I get bored closing my eyes is the the most what well, feels like the most sensible thing to do unless I'm in a glider, you know, that I need to keep my eyes open or parachuting. The thing is, you parachute and you don't need your eyes open the whole time, but at certain times, you do need your eyes open. You know, it's a timing thing. I'd have thought people would jump out of planes. Would there be a timer on the parachute? Some kind of... Because cars can have the distance. You know, your cars can tell how far they are away from the car in front of them. They've got those... I'm I'm not a driver. But I'm not an astronaut either. I'm, I'm not an electrician. I'm lots of things I'm not. But 
I'm not is it senses, distant senses or something where they can sense an object ahead and how far it is and also I think can't some cars park themselves well I'd have thought a parachute would be able to have that sensor to know that it's I don't know, a thousand foot above the ground or whatever um, distance it needs to be for the parachute to open. Just in case, you know what actually, to be fair, I was going to say in case a person fell asleep, but I can't see any situation where if I was jumped out of a plane that I would fall asleep it's probably the least boring thing that I could imagine ever doing it's uh, not exciting because I don't see um, something like that as an exciting thing scary (laughs) for me Um, not really into heights not I don't mind bridges that work, you know, I don't mind like walking across a bridge and not into, t- but then there's a difference between being heights and flying. It's like some people say, well, you can fly, flying's the safest form of transport. Not when all you've got is a parachute on your back and you're in the air on your own. Because technically you are flying, but you're not, you're dropping. But it feels like you're flying, apparently. Uh, not really. Can't imagine I'd just be there going, oh, this is boring. Oh, still got another five seconds before I can open the <laughs> the parachute. Oh, oh, just have a little nap. No, I don't see that occurring. So if you are watching on YouTube, please, oh, I've got itchy head, please um, subscribe because I need to get a thousand subscribers and so far I've got 205 on my new YouTube channel. And I'm going to keep calling it a new YouTube channel, even though I've had it for a few months. Probably, what, six months? Five months? Six? Because that's the only way to justify only having 205 subscribers. But I think I'm quite lucky because the subscribers I do have they're like the best subscribers in the world they are just like the people that listen to my recordings on my podcasts I have the best audience the best listeners Um, very loyal very uh, kind I only ever have nice comments given to me which says just as much about them as it does about me it shows that they're very kind and also it shows that I'm amazing at what I do. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um shows I'm very boring. I suppose in a way I've got the setup quite nice for these boring sessions because if someone wanted to be insulting they could tell me that it's really boring. But then that's a compliment because it's supposed to be. So it's kind of a win-win situation, really. I'll just have a little drink. So I haven't made one of these for three days, I think. And... 
There's no particular reason. I've just been working on the podcasts and my website and I don't know if I mentioned I don't even know if I've done a let me bore you to sleep since but I've now got the podcast back on and I probably did talk about it but I forget what I've spoken about because nothing I speak about is really of any it's, it's not something that I need to remember it's just a bunch of words you know and I I'm not sure if I mentioned why or what's happening with the website but I do I mildly recollect having discussed this topic in a degree of depth on my last Let Me Bore You To Sleep recording. So I won't do it again. But just in case I hadn't mentioned it at all, uh, I did get rid of the website for a couple of days and now it's back. Luckily the uh, host, it's, it's actually Shopify is who I use. And I don't need really to use Shopify in a sense because I don't sell anything, but I will be in the future. So I'm kind of trying to plan it and I don't know why, but I like Shopify. Plus I've got thousands of pages on there. So I thought, well, if I'm going to I'm going to get the website back. I might as well get it back with Shopify if I can, rather than starting from scratch. Because uh, my friend Sebastian pointed out to me that, because I've done this so many times over the years, deleted my website and then gone back and spent another, I don't know, 500 hours building building a new website because it's not just the website building although I don't build it you know I now use the I don't build it from scratch from code but because of how many sessions I have there's a lot of work that goes into a lot of it is copy and paste to be fair is quite tedious and I've been doing a lot of tedious stuff lately regarding the website and also my podcasts and it's you know regarding organizing it and I have keep I have to have breaks because it's really boring you know I mean in a way I prefer just to produce new content and have it all magically uh, go to the places it's supposed to go and be available to the correct audiences and automatically be on my website and promote itself, you know, and make its own video and but it doesn't quite work that way, so it's a it's just a quite a, quite a bit of uh, time that goes into it. It's not difficult, but it's time consuming. Um, but and also at this time, I'm not getting not getting massive. Uh, interest on YouTube but then I've got a very you know small audience at the moment and I've also got an itchy back oh that's better this chair is way too squeaky 
Um, so yeah, it would be nice to. I'm looking forward to that. I don't know what the right word would be. But there's a point in pretty much every YouTuber who creates regular content where like a spike occurs and suddenly they kind of get discovered. Oh, discovered, but more, I don't know if it's that YouTube perhaps starts promoting the videos or, you know, uh, makes them more uh, visible in the searches. I'm not really sure. But every, every YouTube channel I've ever had, there's always come a time when there's a spike and I start to get more subscribers, more comments, more likes, more visits, more plays like accumulatively growing which is I think what well, that's the same word isn't it accumulative accumulatively accumulative accumulative yeah growing and hasn't got to that point yet it might take another six months or a year perhaps for that to happen but I'd like to, yeah, I'd like, I've had so many YouTube channels since 2007, I suppose. You know, the very first video I ever did was in black and white. I think it's still available on uh, Daily Motion, I think because YouTube wasn't the only video platform on the internet. It still isn't the only one, but it's the only one really that is it's the most popular one. And it's pretty much uh, by far the dominant one. But like back in the day, back in the day, there was a few like Break or Breaker. And some of them have stayed, but they've changed, changed what they do, like focus on different things. Uh, daily Motion. And what other ones was there? Some were quite popular as well. You know, I had some that I got thousands of plays on videos really quickly and then um, the website or wherever they were just sort of shut down shut down their service what was there was one that was really good and I'd upload a video and I'd get thousands of plays overnight like just instantly so it must have been a popular a popular video platform but I think it's just like no one could compete with YouTube and then you got Google that owns YouTube so the two biggest search engines on the internet Google and now YouTube so Google being the biggest search engine is obviously going to promote its own videos but then you search on YouTube and that's, that's a, a search engine as well as far as you know for videos I do I don't know if it's is it vain but I do search for myself on <laughs> it's just I want to I want to know um, 
where I am, like on the listings, you know, on, on the pages. So if I put my name in, just Jason Newland, I'm at the top, I'm the first search of Google anyway, and it's just got my website. And then there's Facebook and possibly Twitter, and then there's a, an infectious diseases doctor who's on there with my name. Somewhere there's a cage fighter as well that's got my name. But I'm kind of... I'm at the top of the list of people with my name. You know, as far as search engines go. But on YouTube, if you put hypnosis in, it's as if I don't even exist. Eventually you'll come across a video of mine. But I think some people, they've got, uh, they didn't like the, or some people have actually said to me, well, I've got too many videos. But then that's because I've been working and producing them for f over 13 years. That's why there's so many. And at the moment I'm doing an average two a day. So which is what, that's over 700 a year. So, you know, it's all, I'm only gonna be doing more. I would like to do three a day. So I'd like to do a thousand this year. It's just one of my little little goals. Not it's not a little goal, it's a massive goal. But it's still on my wall to get what do I think I'd like ten thousand subscribers on YouTube. A thousand new videos and a million plays on my YouTube channel I think I think that's what I've got written down on the wall but I can't quite see it because it's at an angle or it's not really the wall that's at an angle it's my my eyes in comparison to the wall because I can't see Yeah, it's like peripheral vision. And peripheral vision isn't, I think it's like the great, greatest, uh, greatest way to read. I think peripheral's probably better for movement. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the podcast, it's going well. It's actually, things are picking up. Well, they're picking up, not picking up from having dropped. They're just continually to grow. Now I'm getting, most days I'm getting over a thousand downloads plus plays. So it could be another 100, 200 plays on top of that each day and it's growing and I do I feel thankful for that it's quite groovy I quite like it and there's still a lot to do there's still a lot of podcast listeners out there that don't know about me and there's still some links on the internet to old podcasts that don't even work anymore. So I think it's, it'll take time. Before 
the links are a bit more uh, available, a bit more uh, obvious online. So, well, I'm just, uh, just a longer way of saying that. I should be easier to find in six months or a year, providing I don't delete anything. As long as I keep the links the way they are, then that's kind of what's needed. So I don't know, I'd like to build up, I think probably by the end of this year, now that I've reached over a thousand a day, I'd like to hit 10,000 downloads a day by the end of this year. So it's a challenge, but it's definitely one worth going for. And because it's growing, I think, you know, I have done, I've had days where I've had 1,800 downloads. So I know that I can nearly reach 2,000 already in a day. So I'd be, I'd be interested to see where I can go with it. So 10,000 by the end of the year, 10,000 de- downloads each day on my podcasts would be, I think that'd be really cool. Because it's, it's nearly 4 million a year, isn't it? Which is good. And then probably by the end of the following year, I'd like to maybe reach 100,000 a day. But uh, just have to wait and see. But I want to I wanna get 10,000 a day by the end of December this year, 2019. 19. No, 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 Nineteen. And I think it would be cool to do that. But at the same time, I want to do some other stuff as well. I don't don't want to just do boring things. You know, I do... Because I've... Yesterday, well, the night before... Not last night, or it might have been last night, but I think it was the night before. I had a conversation with a friend in America. And she was telling me how how my nail-biting session helped her to stop biting her nails forever. And... do get the you, the occasional message telling me that uh, a recording I did for I think one I did for OCD I did one for tinnitus and you know they've been really helpful so I'd like to do more of those kinds of recordings to help people with individual issues so what I've been doing is going through my back catalogue and finding all of the what I would class the more quality recordings as content wise where I've been a bit more specific about a particular issue such as, um, I can't think of anything now. Uh, what ones have I done? OCD, tinnitus, nail biting, um, uh, da 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 binge eating 
alcohol, drugs, a few different things that I've done. So, I, and it's probably about maybe 30, maybe less, maybe more, about 30 recordings. And they're all pretty much quite long. They're all like 30, most of them about 30, 40 minutes, maybe you know an hour. I'd like to do more of those. I'd quite like the idea of maybe doing one a day. But the the thing is, in order for me to feel comfortable to make a recording about a specific issue, I feel I need to know you know a fair bit about that issue before I decide to make that recording so that I feel like I know what I'm talking about so yeah I'm gonna gonna look into that look into it I'm gonna look into it like a big magical ball and decide what to do with it. Yes, oh yes. I need to have a bath. I think I'm at that position where I know that when I've had a bath, I'm going to actually feel lighter. I'm that dirty. I'm going to feel physically lighter. It's like a three layers of skin will come off or something, you know, that kind of, or layers of dirt. It's, uh, also need to do the washing up. See, what I did in January, well, actually going back, when I first moved in here, it was, it will be four years in two months time. So April, in April it would have been four years that I moved in. And I didn't have all I had was one plate one knife and fork one spoon one cup um, wasn't there a video about a cup one spoon one cup or something I don't know um, but I didn't have much in the way of that stuff so I remember I went to um, Sainsbury's and it was in the evening so I had the flat it was pretty much empty but I needed to get some stuff in because I had a fridge being delivered uh, the washing machine being delivered and the cooker being delivered so what I thought is what, what I need to do now is I need to have something to eat off of uh, as well as needing food and uh, I wonder what it is that I bought I wish I should have kept the receipt just out of kind of for nostalgic reasons but I didn't think about it at the time because at the time I wasn't feeling nostalgic I I spent about £180 and I had this uh, Sainsbury's trolley and it was jam packed full of stuff Two of the things I do know, no, three of the things I had 
or was it four? So I had a plate set. So it was four dinner plates, four side plates, like they're just, I suppose, half the size of the dinner plates, maybe, I don't know. I suppose, it's, what would a side plate be for? Uh, so maybe like a bread roll or something if you was having a, uh, a meal in a restaurant. But what I like to do sometimes, I'll just have a side plate if all I'm having is a sandwich. I just use a side plate. But I don't call it a side plate, I just call it a plate. You know, I'm quite informal when I'm at home. And then the third thing in the pack was a, there was four cereal bowls. Or you could use them for soup. Or even dessert, you know, you could have ice cream and uh, some fruit or a gatto oh, I haven't had a gatto for so long I've forgotten what gattos taste like oh so I had four of each and I thought well that's that's okay that'll do me it's only me it's only me here that'll that'll you know get me by and then I purchased some saucepans. And there was three. There was a small one. There was one that was bigger than that. And then there was one that was bigger than the one that was bigger than the small one. So there was, I guess, a large one, a medium-sized one, and a small one because the large one would go on the bottom the medium sized one would fit comfortably inside the large one and then the small saucepan would fit comfortably inside the medium sized saucepan as they were like stacked so I didn't have them stacked on the wall or anything like that I uh, had them on top of the fridge uh, I used to, I don't anymore. I said that like there was some kind of story coming, there isn't, I just don't have them there anymore. And I thought that would do me. And then I bought some cutlery. And I think that was in fours as well. So four knives, four forks four big uh, big spoons you know just uh, is it dessert size spoons uh, or the sort of spoons you'd use if you're having soup or mind you if you're having soup you might want a, a deeper spoon but I didn't that was uh, the deep spoons were in the uh philosophical cutlery section bing 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 and they had the little spoons as well is it teaspoons the you know like the little spoons that you turn turn around in a teacup when making tea to stir the the liquid uh, and you know or it might be coffee but to stir the liquid and whatever contents uh, were, you know, so that it mixed together with the hot water to produce the final results of whatever um, hot beverage it was that you were intending to produce and consume, I guess. So I had that with the cutlery. And I'm pretty sure, pretty sure 
that's the yeah I'm pretty sure that the the cutlery was in a I have this memory that the cutlery was in like a, a cardboard but covered in plastic so cardboard inside plastic on the outside that's sealed so it's really difficult to actually get inside of it I think I needed to use my keys on my keychain it's not a keychain it's a key loop there's no chains involved um, so I think I did that in order to get into the the package for the the knives but I don't remember though because it was in, in the evening and it was quite late it's like 10 half 10 probably by the time I got home and I don't know if I was that interested in unpacking stuff at that time I don't recall I might have, I might have been I just don't remember So I had that and then for some reason, I suppose it's good because I do use them, but I got some knives like a, 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 a set of proper steel catering knives. which actually came with its own wooden block you know with the slits which um, and they're at this it's very clever the way they do it is this, this, they've got these slits in it in the wood and each knife has got its own space and there's only enough space for each knife to go into it so the, the the bigger knives have got a bigger slit where you can slot the knife in, and so they've got these like gashes. So there's one gash, two gash, three gash, four gash. I think it's six gashes, so the knife can go into the gash, and there's there's lots of admittedly you can put a small knife into a big gash and the the slit or the gash bit although it's long and it's inside is I guess there's quite a bit of room for the for manoeuvring the handle of the knife uh, prevents it from going all the way into the gash, so it doesn't, so that it doesn't get lost. You don't get lost inside the gash. But there's a small knife. I think I would class that as a, a potato peeler or a vegetable peeler, personally. And then there's a longer knife. Don't know what that's for. Then there's another knife, I don't know what that's for. The only two knives I really recognize, well not recognize, it's not because I've given them names. Um, no, oh, um, I saw Horace in the street the other day. Oh, yeah, Horace, yeah, you, you mean the knife that you use? Yeah, yeah, Horace, the knife. He, uh, no, it's, so there's one knife which is for chopping. You know, like you see on the chef programs or the cookie programs, and they use them to cut up onions and vegetables and stuff like that. So I've got one of those knives, and I've got a bread cutting knife. I'm sure, we're pretty sure that's what it's. It's like serrated, it's very it's big, it's serrated, it's 
for cutting bread or rolls as far as I can see oops sorry I just banged I don't know what to do with my hands sometimes I ended up banging I ended up rubbing against things and Andre's still in the bedroom doing his thing there's been times that he's been with his girlfriend which is the old slip ahead and the body he has is either a carrier bag or some um, a tea towel or whatever he can find really and he's been at it and I've gone out I've gone to the shops and I've come back and he's still at it he's uh, very dedicated he's a dedicated lover he really is and um, so those are the knives that I got for the kitchen and I think they came in a box if I remember rightly they came in a box but there was polythene because I suppose for protection you know the, the whole thing was in polythene uh, like uh, do you know when you buy something like a laptop or something and you've got these polythene sides that the laptop fits into either side it was that kind of thing but the polythene fitted over the whole thing so the box was a lot bigger than the actual block with the, the gashes with the, the, the knives in and um so I got those three, so they were boxes, but they were on top of all the other stuff. But I don't remember what else I got. Oh, I think I bought a toaster. But I didn't buy a kettle. In fact, I've still got the same kettle that I had four years ago. I really need to get myself a new kettle. I think for me a kettle is a little bit like a hairstyle. So like you find one you like and just stick with it. So I, I don't know, I should perhaps get another one, a new one. So I'm not sure if I got a toaster or not but I know it stopped working whatever toaster I had I might have brought the one in that I had originally before that but it got to a point that every time I turned the oh, Andre's just running and he's drinking out of his water but he's on the floor he's collapsed he's got no energy <laughs> He's just laying on the floor with his head flopped in the water drinking. He's very tired. Oh, he's got a bit of energy now. He's managed to stand up. Just about. I can't imagine he's going to be too active. I'm probably going to go to sleep now. Be very surprised if he doesn't. He might have something to eat first. And then he's going to go to sleep, I reckon. Oh, he's still going for more water. definitely uh, dehydrated I 
that's the thing he's so considerate he doesn't um, think about his own needs <laughs> yeah that's it now he said something to eat now he's going to eat a bit of food and then I reckon he's going to run over get into his bag and he's just going to fall into a deep sleep a well earned rest after probably an hour yeah probably a good hour he was at it he was at it before I started this recording and I'm 50 minutes in so yeah he's, he was at it for probably an hour or more it's got to be tiring I don't understand it because we're in the winter, you know. I know it's not particularly it's it's a mild winter so far. And I suppose technically we're nearly halfway through February because it's February the 14th soon, isn't it? Which is Valentine's Day. Uh, I feel sorry for the postman having to carry all those letters and you know gifts all the way up to my place tiring him out every year doing that yeah so what else did I get I suppose clothes white not clothes um Shopping wise, I probably got the basics, you know, some breakfast cereal, probably got some bananas. That sounds like something that I'd do. Uh, what else? Um, maybe some vegetables, like salad. Perhaps some bread. I suppose if I was moving in, which I must have been at that point, getting my first bit of food in, so I'd need the very basics. And the very basics for a fridge, to me, would be margarine or butter, depending, you know, what your what your preference is um, milk what else probably some yogurts I do like yogurts possibly some eggs some sandwich stuff perhaps some uh, tomatoes and a cucumber perhaps a half a cucumber or a whole cucumber depending on uh, what I'm planning to do with it maybe some cheese as well that's always a nice little filler isn't it sandwich filler some cheese and then, of course, I've got eggs and milk. We can make an omelette. Some chocolate bars to put in the fridge as well. So what else? I thought he would have gone to sleep, but he's... He's clearly not tired. It must have given him a, a little boost. I think he's just running around all his toys and stuff saying, guess what? Yeah. Over an hour. Yeah. I was doing it for over an hour. 
He's just like showing off to all his teddy bears and he's probably gonna make a phone call in a minute. He's waiting for me to finish on the phone so he can phone up his friends. Yeah. Nine times. Nine times in an hour. Here's a show off. God, nine times. After the second time, just dust would just blow out, wouldn't it? Anyway, um, <laughs> um, bum, 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 bum. So that do the fridge, then the freezer. You need to have stuff in the freezer. So when I first moved in, I had a freezer compartment above the fridge. So I just needed to get a fridge. That's the main thing. Wasn't worried about the freezer at that point. And a cooker, which is what I did, and a washing machine. So they were the main things. My dad had a freezer that he was going to give me, so he brought that over. And that is now underneath the kitchen counter, and the fridge is on top. And I was talking, and I remember saying to my dad, I was going to get a an extra freezer. He said, well, you don't want a freezer, I want two freezers. And I'm like, no, what do you mean I don't want, I just told you I did want that. And uh, that's what I did. I got a new freezer, like a, an open top one. And it was a great purchase. It's something that I use a lot. So I've got the two freezers is exactly what I need. I've got different things in each freezer so I know kind of where things are. And they're not stacked right to the top where I have to pull stuff out of everything, you know? So, yeah, I'm pleased with that. I think that was less than a hundred pound, that freezer, the new one. And then I needed stuff Oh yeah, I probably got a, a bowl for washing up with. So a washing up bowl, possibly, you know, some stuff like washing up liquid, uh, deodorant, shampoo, that kind of stuff that I needed. So I probably got a bunch of that stuff. And then there's kitchen cupboard things that I needed. I can't remember what that would be. Biscuits, cream crackers, jams, yeah, sort of stuff that's in jars, like jam, honey, marmalade, tea bags, coffee. Um, Trying to think what else? Tea bags, coffee, marmalade, jam, honey, sugar, of course. Sugar. I might have got myself some tins of beans. So tins of beans, tins of spaghetti, Maybe some actual spaghetti, you know, like real life stuff in packets, pasta, rice. Uh, what else? I reckon I've got myself some tomato ketchup. I can't 
to think of what else. I think that must have been it. It couldn't have been much more than that. Yeah, that's about it really. And I should apologise that this recording wasn't wasn't particularly boring. There was a lot of interesting stuff in there today. A lot of uh, yeah, excitement. Uh, although I am quite tired. I could easily fall asleep. If it wasn't for these high heels that I'm wearing, I could. I'm not wearing high heels, I don't know one. This basque. Basques don't have catch on your chest hairs. No, I don't wear basques. I decided the other night, it might sound like a strange thing, but if I ever ever became an MMA fighter, like a cage fighter, mixed martial arts fighter, I would definitely have to wax my entire body. Get rid of all the hairs. Just in case you weren't sure what waxing meant. And that's it. Thank you for listening to this. Let me bore you to sleep. And I'll speak to you very, very soon. Bye.